Hello and welcome back to part... Sorry about this. Are you done? Thank you. Hello and welcome back to part 7 of my tutorial series showing you how to make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony Premium. In the previous video we started to build the character rig hierarchy and in this video we're going to talk about deformers. Now deformers act as a skeleton with limbs and articulations that allow you to bend, reshape and curve your drawings. And we're going to be adding a load of those to the character so I just want to give a broad overview of what they are and how they work. So I've started a new scene here and we will be going back to the character rig in another video. So I've just made a shape here and I've showed you in previous videos how to make drawing nodes, how to add pegs. So this is just a basic rectangle shape. So to add a deformer or deformation chain to your drawing node, first of all select the drawing node. We want to then come up to here which is the rigging tool which is a little hammer and wrench icon so click that. You'll then see a bunch of options appear in the tool properties. There are different types of deformers. The first one I'm going to talk about is the bone deformer, bone and articulation mode. And I'll show you how that works now. So to start building a deformer, we're going to start with the offset placement, which is essentially the start of the deformation chain. So we're just going to click just outside of this shape here. And then we're going to click again in the middle here. And then we're going to click up here which is just above the shape here. So now you can see um, we're in editing mode and you can tell that because it is this red color here. So this is just for placing where you want the deformer inside our shape. So this is the offset. You can move the whole thing. These are bones, these parts here so we can rotate these and position them where we want. And this is an articulation in the middle which is essentially a joint. So you can also move this circle and that will determine how sharp the angle will be on the bend. So rule of thumb, just make it about the width of the shape. And you can also move this end bit here. Something I forgot to mention while I was editing this video, if you want to put a deformer in say a tail, it would always be best to have that tail in a straight shape and then put the deformer inside of that rather than having the tail bent to start with and then put in a bent deformer inside it. Just something worth mentioning. Bye! Um, if you wanted to, you could make multiple bones. So there we just made two, but if we want to add more, we can do that as well. So we can add one there, add one there, and we'll add that there. When you're happy with the placement of your deformer, come back over to the transform tool, and then you'll see it will appear green. So now if we come over to the node view here, you'll see that this has appeared between the peg and the drawing, and this just means it's a group. So you can group anything. For example, if I wanted to take all of this and press Control and G, you'll see that it's gone into a group. I'll control Z that. And that's all this is. It's just a group. So if we go inside it, we can see that this deformation chain is made up of three bones. So you've got that one, that one, and that one. And that's just automatically grouped up because we have this option here, automatically create a group when creating a new deformation chain. And that will be selected by default. So then we're going to deform our shape. So if I bend that node and then I bend that node, it manipulates the shape of this. And we can in increase the size of this articulation so that you can see if I bring it up, it produces more of a gentle curve. If I shrink it down, it's more of a sharper curve. So that's how the bone deformer works. So this essentially allows you to create a bone-like structure which may be useful for things like limbs. So most of it is quite rigid and is manipulated with rotations. However, you can also move these articulations if you want to stretch it as well. If you want to reset the position, you can select the deformer here and then you can come up to this button here, reset current keyframe, skaboosh, and then it goes back to when you originally created the deformer. If you want to hide the deformer, you can click off the shape and then click this button here and then it will disappear. If you want to bring it back, you can click the same button and then it will reappear like that. So that's the bone deformer. Next up, we're gonna talk about the curve deformer. If I go into this node view here, 
and I select those and I press enable. This is just one that I made earlier. And now I'm gonna go and select this shape and I'm gonna select the rigging tool again. And this time we are gonna select curve mode. So again, if I come up to here, just select outside and then I come up to the top. This time I'm gonna hold and drag. So I move this handle down and then you will see that there's another handle up here. So I'm just gonna bring that up to the center. So we'll have it around there. We'll have the handles quite close. So if I move this handle out like that, you can see that there's a curve that has been created. And again, you can create multiple articulations just like we did with the bone tool if you want. And you can see that this curve has an offset just like the bone deformer where you can rotate the whole thing. So we're gonna go back to the transform tool and we'll see how this works. So if I grab those handles, now that a curve has been created, whereas if I go to the bone, and I turn that deformer on, this has got more of a rigidity to it. So when using deformers, if you do manipulate them to an extreme point, they will start to break. So you can see here, you've got these lines crossing over. If you do want to position a character to an extreme, it would be better to create separate drawing nodes and then have deformers in each of those drawing nodes. And I'll be talking more about that later when we build the limbs of our character rig. Or alternatively, it would be better to draw a separate drawing substitution for that art node. And I'll be talking more about substitutions later on in this video and future videos. So I'm gonna click that curve and then we're gonna come back and click reset current frame and then that will snap it back. You can see here that we've got the two deformations showing. So I'm gonna click that, and if I go up to this button here, that will make all the other deformers invisible and just make this one visible. But if I select this button here and then select that and then go over to this one and select that one, that will show the deformer without affecting other deformers. But if you do want to move it to a more extreme position and you don't want these overlaps to be showing, you can come over to the node library and search for auto fold. And then we're going to drag that in. And then we are going to place it between the drawing and the deformer. Hold alt, bring it over here. That will get rid of those, that line cross over here. But we are going to delete that for now. So we've got the bone deformer and we've got the curve deformer. So next is going to be the envelope deformer. But before I do that, I just want to come over to this, which is automatic mode. If you're in automatic mode, you can control whether it does a bone deformer or a curve deformer, depending on how you click. So if we click once, just like that, it will create a bone deformer. However, if you click and hold, it will create a curve deformer. So that's just something I wanted to mention quickly. So let's talk about the envelope deformer now, which is this one over here. So if we select envelope mode and we come up here, we're gonna put a deformer around the edge. So I'm just gonna click just inside and then I'm gonna click and drag, similar to how we did it with the curve deformer. And then I'm gonna go to this point, click and drag up to about the middle, click and drag. And then we're gonna come up to this offset here. We're gonna hold Alt and that will change our cursor to this little C icon, which is to complete the entire chain. And then we can manipulate these handles so that we can get it looking how we want. And then we'll go to the transform tool. And now you can see that you can manipulate the edges of this shape. And again, you can add more points to this if you want to. Um, just keep in mind, the more points that you do add, the more work is gonna be because you're gonna have to move multiple points. Also, the more deformers that you do add to your rig, the heavier it's gonna get. So something else you can do as well is if I come over to the deformer and just delete it and get rid of it, I can select this and then I can come up to animation, envelope creator, and then Toon Boom can actually automatically create a envelope deformer for you. So we're just gonna do the four corners here. So we'll just need four and then the rest will leave as is and then press create envelope. And then you can see now it has automatically created an envelope for us, which can help speed things up. Now, if you've got more of a complex shape, it might not create an envelope deformer in the way that you want, but you can use it just as a starting point. So one thing I will say about this envelope deformer is if we create a pattern on this color, if I create some pink circles on this, 
you'll see that when I manipulate this shape, it distorts the pattern in an undesirable way. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if you did want to put a pattern on this shape, it would probably be best to create it as a separate art node. So then it wouldn't be affected by the deformer. So there we have it. We have a bone deformer. We have a curve deformer and we have an envelope deformer. Next, I'm still gonna talk about the envelope deformer, but we're gonna use it in a slightly different way. So we're gonna select the envelope deformer again, but this time we're gonna use it in the same way that we used the curve deformer. So we're gonna just click outside and then we'll come up to here, drag, and then drag this handle up to there. And you may be thinking, oh, that just looks like it works the same way as the curve deformer. However, with the curve deformer, if I move that point and then I move this point, this offset, it will control the whole positioning of the deformer. However, with the envelope or curvelope, as I've heard it being called, if I move this here, you can see that it doesn't affect the rest of the deformer. So you might want to use that one instead of the curve deformer, depending on what you're using it for. That might be useful for a curved leg. So let's move on to the next type of deformer, which is going to be the freeform deformer and we're going to select our art node, come over to the rigging tool, and this time we're going to be selecting freeform mode. This game bone deformer, we're not going to talk about that because it's essentially the same as the bone deformer. It's a little bit lighter so that you can use it in game engines, but this is the freeform deformer. So if I make points in these four corners like that, it looks different from the other deformers because they haven't got bones, articulations or curves. And then if I select the transform tool, you can move those points around like that. But if I add additional points, say I add a couple in the middle and maybe I'll put one there and there, then you'll see that as I move this one, the areas around the other ones get manipulated too. And then I can rotate this like that and you can add more points or less points and I would say this is more useful for things like flags or maybe capes perhaps. So the more you start rigging the more you'll get a feel for which deformers work best and are most suitable for your particular needs. But what if you had a shape and you wanted to add multiple deformers to one shape? Well, you can do that if we just hide these for now and then we come back to our bone deformer. So pretend this was a leg, for example, and you just wanted to have the option to have a bone deformer in it as well as a curve deformer. So if I select this shape here, we're going to create a brand new substitution. And a substitution allows you to swap between different drawings within the same art node. And I'll show you how that works. So if I select this here, and I'm going to select this plus button here, and then we're going to select drawing substitutions. Now you can see that we've just got one substitution because we've just made the drawing. We haven't added any others to it, but I'm going to come over to here and I can either right click this, go up to drawings, and I can create an empty drawing and you will see that the drawing has disappeared because it's an empty cell. But I'm gonna undo that and then I'm gonna select that and this time I'm going to go to drawings and duplicate drawings. Create an empty drawing is Alt Shift R and duplicate a drawing is Alt Shift D. So now you can see that we've got two drawings within the same art node and they're exactly the same. And in the timeline, you can see this is separated out. So we've got drawing one here that is under the parameters. And if I select that one, it changes to two and then it changes to two here as well. So these are useful for things like eye shapes, mouth shapes, hand shapes, where you want to quickly swap between different drawings, maybe um, different variations of body parts as you're moving between different angles of the character. And we're going to talk a lot more about that in later episodes. So if I create a circle on here, you'll see in the drawing substitutions that this drawing has no circle and this drawing does have a circle. And you can switch between different substitutions by pressing the square brackets like that. And it's also useful for say, if you want an object disappearing for whatever reason, instead of creating no exposure, it's always best to create 
a blank exposure. So we're gonna go back to exposure number two and we're just gonna delete this circle. Actually, I'm gonna change the color of this slightly just so you can see the deformer a little bit easier. Let's just make it that color. And that deformation chain is on substitution one and also substitution two. But I wanna make a new deformer for that new substitution. And the way I do that is I come up to here, this button, creates a new deformation chain associated with the drawing at the current frame. So select that and then that deformer will disappear. And then we can make a new one. So we'll just make a curvelope deformer. And you can see that here it says transformation one, transformation two. So now if I swap between these two drawings, you can see that substitution one has the bone deformer and substitution two has the curve deformer. Next, I wanna talk about what if perhaps it was a character and it had a hat on the top and you wanted to move that hat with the deformer. Well, I'll show you. If we come back to the node view and I'm gonna create a new drawing, press Control R and I'm just gonna, let's just make it a hat. So there we go, a really quality hat there that I spent a few hours on. And then we're gonna peg that up, place that on the top, shrink it down just a little bit. And then I'll touch that peg to there as well. So now this hat does rotate with this shape, but if I manipulate the curve, it doesn't move with it. So the way we fix that is we come up here and I'm just gonna connect the deformer to the hat. So now when I move that curve, you can see that the hat moves with it and then we can manipulate that hat. And that still works if I switch between the two deformers as well. But if I go back to the curve, you'll notice that this hat shape starts to get manipulated. And you might not want that, especially if it's like a hand, for example, on the end of an arm, you want the hand to stay in its default shape. So the way you can fix that is if we press enter and we search for kinematic output and select that, we can then put that above the hat. So when we do manipulate this curve, it does keep its shape. And another thing I wanna talk about as well is weighted deformers. So I'm just gonna disable that for now and I'm gonna bring back our envelope. So as I mentioned before, um, there was a pattern inside this shape. And when you manipulate this, it would start to break the pattern inside. And you can fix that by actually using what's called a weighted deform. So if I search for weighted deform here, and I'm gonna delete that, and I'm gonna put this just above the drawing, and then I'm gonna create multiple pegs. Before I do that, I'm gonna create a pattern again. So I'm gonna come into the drawing. So this weighted deformer, it works in a slightly different way to the normal deformers. And this is actually something I picked up from Onion Skin's uh, YouTube video featuring Z-Bird as well. But yeah, if we create multiple pegs here, say one for each corner. So I'm gonna press Control and P four times. And we're just gonna connect all of these to our deformer. And then I'm just gonna place each of these pivots in each corner like that. And all of these deformers are all gonna plug into the left side of this one. And then the main peg will plug into this. So now you can see when I select each of these pivots, the shape of this transforms, but it doesn't break the color. But just keep in mind that this is a very heavy way of putting a deformer in. So maybe limit it to one, maybe two per character if you need it, maybe a skirt or something like that. And even in the Tomb Boom documentation as well, it says that it's quite a heavy node to add. So just be aware of that, especially if you don't have a very powerful computer. So one last thing as well I wanna talk about, if we bring back this and then we turn our deformer back on, if I do bend this shape and then I change to the curve, it won't maintain that position because they're separate deformers. So that's something worth noting. So quickly, I wanna talk about the way that these deformers are animated and something to keep in mind while you're animating and before you decide on what deformer you might wanna use. So if I go down to the timeline here and then I move over, you can see that the drawings have swapped out. So if you've got loads of different drawings which are swapping throughout the timeline and you just wanna keep it as one drawing, just highlight the whole thing, press F5, overwrite it to the frame that you want to, 
and press OK. And then that will just keep that as the same drawing throughout them. So we're going to go to frame 10. I'm just going to press zero to collapse the timeline. And then we're just going to move these two bones like that. So now we've got two keyframes, one straight, one bent, and we're going to interpolate that. So we'll select this button here, set motion keyframe or control K. So now this is animated like that. Um, actually, I might do that in a more extreme position. So that animates it you know, as you would expect, wiggly worm style. However, if we delete this keyframe, and this time we're gonna change the drawing to the curve, and then we'll just we'll just press F6 on that just to make sure there's a keyframe throughout the whole rig. And then we're gonna move this to a similar sort of position that we had for the bone deformer, make it quite extreme, maybe move it down here. And then we're gonna set a motion keyframe so that it interpolates, and then so now it moves down like that and we're going to do another keyframe over here and we'll just do the opposite, do a motion on that as well. So you can see the problem here when we go from here to here. The points on this deformer, they go in a straight line because you've told Toon Boom that it's just going from this position to this position. There's no arc and that's because we don't manipulate curves as a rotation like we do with the bones in the bone deformer. So just keep that in mind when you are adding a curve that it might require a little bit more work when it comes to animation. Um, but curves are great, you know, if you've got like a, a rubber hose style arm. So as I said before, we are going to be adding quite a few deformers to our character rig in the upcoming episodes. So in the next video, we are going to cover masks and auto patches. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can ask me live over on Twitch where I stream this stuff five days a week. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. Your support really does go a long way. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, you can click that notification bell. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.